Today, we set out on a fascinating tour of the vast and varied Roman provinces, taking us from the hazy coasts of Britain to the warm continent of Africa. Join me as we explore the geographical wonders, cultural kaleidoscopes, and distinctive political structures that made up the powerful Roman Empire. Let's start now. Let's first comprehend the significance of Roman provinces and how they came to be, before we get into detail about particular provinces. When the Roman Republic became an empire, it was necessary to find a more effective means to manage and keep order over its enormous lands. Consequently, the idea of provinces developed. These areas were important for preserving control and a gathering resources for the empire, and they were governed by governors that Rome selected. Conquering the northern frontier with Britannia, the Roman Empire's most northern province, serves as the starting point of our expedition. Britannia was a severe obstacle to Roman conquest due to its foggy vistas and rough beauty. The Celtic tribes first resisted the Romans tenaciously, but they eventually succeeded in establishing their dominance, leaving a rich cultural heritage in their wake. Roman conquest was extremely difficult in this area of foggy coastlines and untamed terrain, but it also had immense appeal and potential. Let's investigate the intriguing tale of the Roman conquest and shaping of Britannia. The topographical variety of Britannia was impressive, ranging from undulating hills and lush woods to expansive coasts. Celtic tribes like the Iceni and Brigantes, who zealously defend their territories and way of life, initially met the Romans with ferocious hostility. But finally, the Roman military apparatus under the command of generals like Julius Caesar and then Emperor Claudius cemented their dominance. Britannia saw considerable modifications as a result of Roman occupation. To ease military movements and trade, the Romans built a vast network of roads, including the well-known Fossa Way and Watling Street. To keep control of and defend the frontier, massive structures like Hadrian's Wall in the north and the Antonine Wall further south were built. Under Roman authority, the province saw economic prosperity, with lively cities like Londinium, modern-day London, rising as thriving trading hubs. Modern agricultural methods were established by the Romans, which enhanced production and sparked the expansion of a robust agricultural industry. The development of mines produced precious materials including lead, tin, and iron. Britannia's culture was a complex fusion of Roman, Celtic, and indigenous customs. Roman architecture, language, and customs were introduced to the area, leaving a permanent mark. Temples, theaters, and bathhouses, among other magnificent buildings, dot the landscape, displaying the splendor of Roman civilization. It is crucial to remember that rural areas continued to be strongly influenced by Celtic traditions. The Celtic tribes of Britain each had their own unique traditions, ways of life, and forms of expression in the arts. These cultural aspects were not eliminated by the Roman conquest. Rather, they were merged in a special way that gave Britain its identity. Famous people like the Iceni warrior Queen Boudicca served as examples of the continuous cultural processes in Britannia. Boudicca organized a significant uprising against Roman control in AD 60 or 61 in an effort to free her people from what she saw as the empire's oppression. Despite the fact that her uprising finally failed, it demonstrated the tenacity and tenacity of the Celtic tribes. As Roman rule in Britannia became more and more established, the province played a crucial role in the commercial and defense networks of the empire. It functioned as a jumping-off point for future northern expansion and as a vital connection between the western and eastern parts of the empire. The tale of Britannia exemplifies the intricate interactions between conquerors and conquered, as well as the lasting influences of both Roman and Celtic cultures. The Roman Empire had a significant influence on Britannia, as evidenced by the archaeological sites, artifacts, and even the names of cities and towns that remain today. Britannia was renowned for its varied landscape, which included sweeping coasts, thick woods, and undulating hills. Significant improvements to the area's infrastructure, including roads, aqueducts, and spectacular fortifications like Hadrian's Wall were brought about under Roman rule. The province's economy flourished, and busy cities like Londinium, today's London, grew to be important trading hubs. Britannia's culture was a fusion of Roman, Celtic, and indigenous customs. Roman influence may be evident in the culture's architecture, language, and traditions, although Celtic influences persisted in the countryside. Boudicca, a warrior queen who launched a revolt against Roman power, 
is one famous person who exemplifies the continuous cultural dynamics in Britain. We come to Hispania, the Roman province that includes the Iberian Peninsula, as we move south. Even before the arrival of the Romans, this area was home to a variety of indigenous tribes, including the Celts and the Iberians, who left a rich historical legacy. Hispanic cultures, a tapestry, amazing geographical variety could be seen throughout Hispania, from the rich valleys and sun-drenched coasts to the rugged hills of the Pyrenees. The region's rich natural wealth and strategic significance as a doorway to Africa drew the Romans. With the founding of splendid cities like Emerita Augusta, modern-day Merida, and Taraco, modern-day Tarragona, Roman influence altered Hispania. These urban areas combined the indigenous Hispano-Roman culture with Roman architecture, such as theaters, amphitheaters, and aqueducts. The confluence of the cultures in Hispania was one of its most intriguing features. A strong Hispano-Roman culture developed as a result of the mingling of local traditions with Roman language. Ancient ruins, mosaics, and Roman-influenced languages like Catalan and Galician are examples of this rare blending that may still be found today. As we move east, we reach the province of Egypt, which includes the hospitable plains of Egypt and is known as the jewel of the eastern Mediterranean. Due to its vast agricultural resources and advantageous position, this province was of utmost importance to the Roman Empire. Egypt, the home of the pharaohs and the emperors, grand pyramids, temples, and the recognizable River Nile helped shape the landscape of ancient Egypt, a country with a rich past. Roman culture and architecture were greatly influenced by Egypt's wonders, which led to the blending of Egyptian and Roman customs. Egypt has had a different kind of government than other provinces. It was directly governed by an imperial prefect, chosen by the emperor, rather than a senatorial governor. As Egypt was in charge of supplying Rome with grain, papyrus, and other priceless resources, this unusual arrangement underscored Egypt's important role in maintaining the empire. The blending of the cultures at Egyptus was very amazing. The indigenous religion and practices of Egypt merged with Hellenistic and Roman influences to create a distinctive syncretic civilization. Africa Proconsularis, Gateway to the Sahara. The devotion of the goddess Isis expanded across the empire, demonstrating the long-lasting influence of Egyptian mysticism. African Province of Africa, Proconsularis. The Roman Empire gave enormous importance to the African province of Africa Proconsularis, where we will make our final trip. Africa Proconsularis was a thriving and prosperous province that extended from modern-day Tunisia through parts of Libya and Algeria. The strategic position of Africa Proconsularis was one of the main contributing causes to its significance. The province, which is located on the Mediterranean coast, served as a crucial crossing point between Europe and the enormous Sahara Desert. It became a center for trade and cross-cultural interchange thanks to its ports, which enabled communication and trade. Africa, Proconsularis's rich soils were ideal for agriculture, and the area became well known for its prolific grain output. As a result, it became a vital source of food for Rome's expanding population. Large estates, known as latifundia, were built for agricultural use, creating substantial employment and boosting the province's economy. The African proconsular city of Carthage was of utmost significance. It was previously the seat of the powerful ancient Carthaginian Empire, which Rome faced off against in the Punic Wars. The Romans rebuilt Carthage after it had been destroyed, and it went on to become a significant hub for trade, culture, and government. Aqueducts, theaters, and other beautiful public structures helped Carthage develop into a thriving metropolis. Due to its importance in the Roman administrative structure, it functioned as the provincial capital and was home to a number of governmental offices. Because of its fame, the city attracted thinkers, creatives, and academics, which boosted its cultural diversity. Aside from Carthage, important African proconsularis cities also included Utica, Leptis Magna, and Hadrumetum. As thriving commercial hubs, these cities promoted both economic development and cross-cultural interaction. They were embellished with splendid temples, baths, and forums that displayed the splendor of Roman architecture. A proconsul chosen by the Roman Senate served as the cornerstone of Africa Proconsularis's governmental structure. While retaining Roman control and authority, this organizational structure permitted some local autonomy. The province's business, including taxation, law enforcement, and military matters, were under the proconsul's control. Africa 
Proconsularis's cultural richness resulted from the blending of numerous cultures. The Numidians and the Mori, the native Berber people, coexisted with Roman culture while maintaining their own traditions and customs. Carthage's Punic past has had a long-lasting effect on the area, resulting in a distinctive fusion of cultures. Government and infrastructure were only two aspects of Roman influence in Africa Proconsularis. It included religion, education, and language. Latin was adopted as the official language of government and commerce, facilitating communication among the varied people. Roman schools and academies provided chances for intellectual growth through the diffusion of education. With the advent of Roman deities, along with pre-existing indigenous beliefs, religion played an important role in Africa pro-consularis. The adoration of regional deities coexisted with the worship of gods like Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. This theological landscape of syncretism demonstrated Roman culture's resilience and inclusivity. We acknowledge the lasting impact of this unique province as we come to a conclusion with our examination of Africa Proconsularis. Its advantageous position, thriving economy, and blending of cultures represented the intricate web of the Roman Empire. Africa Proconsularis is a living example of how civilizations can coexist, adapt, and flourish in the face of many forces. There were plenty of natural resources and a Mediterranean climate in Africa Proconsularis. Due to the province's rich soils, which promoted the development of products like wheat, olives, and grapes, the Romans were drawn to it. The city of Carthage flourished as a significant commercial hub, becoming the region's economic and cultural canter. The Senate-chosen proconsul was the cornerstone of the Roman administration in Africa Proconsularis. This preserved Roman sovereignty over the region while ensuring some local autonomy. Roman roads and aqueducts were incorporated into modern infrastructure, which improved connection and facilitated trade. The Phoenician, Punic, and native Berber traditions had an impact on the cultural diversity of Africa, Proconsularis, creating a distinctive fusion of cultures. Roman language and habits spread over the area, deeply influencing the native populace. As we come to a close on our tour of the Roman provinces, we have seen the remarkable geographic diversity, cultural kaleidoscopes, and political structures that made up these areas. The Roman Empire's success in assimilating other cultures while yet exercising control is evidence of its lasting influence? Next time, join us as we continue learning about the fascinating past of ancient civilizations. To ensure you never miss an episode, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell up till then.